What's up everybody? Welcome to a new English Beat. I'm Katya. Today's lesson is going to be very different and I hope you like it. I've selected 10 English words that I really like either because of the way they sound or their meaning or both. Are you ready to expand your vocabulary and to learn some new expressions? If so, grab your vocabulary notebook and a pen and let's kick off. Before we start, I'd like to thank you for watching my previous lesson, which was a collocation quiz. I'm really happy you enjoyed it. And I'm gonna give you the correct answer to the bonus question I asked you. And the correct answer is to write a rough draft. So the collocation is a rough draft. So if it was correct, well done. And if you missed this quiz and you want to do it, you can find the link in the description box and also the pop-up card right here. And now let's go down to business. The first word on my list today is a noun, serendipity. I like both the way it sounds and also its meaning. According to the Oxford Dictionary, serendipity is the fact of something interesting or pleasant happening by chance. One of my favorite movies is Serendipity. Sarah, the main character, says that serendipity is one of her favorite words. And Jonathan answers, it's such a nice sound for what it means. A fortunate accident. Also in the movie, Sarah says to Jonathan, if we are meant to meet again, then we'll meet again. I really like the idea of what it's meant to be will always find its way. And we also have an adjective, serendipitous, which means happening or found by chance. One simple sentence, it was a serendipitous first date. And now let's move on to the second word, epiphany. I also like the way it sounds and also its meaning. Epiphany means a moment when you suddenly understand something. Let's put it into a simple sentence. I had an epiphany and was able to read between the lines. And in this example, we've got a C2 idiom to read between the lines. It means to understand someone's real feelings or intentions from what they say or write. By the way, Taylor Swift has a song called Epiphany. And in the chorus, she sings only 20 minutes to sleep, but you dream of some epiphany. Just one single glimpse of relief to make some sense of what you've seen. You can check it out. And now let's move on to the third word, which is a go-getter. I like its meaning because it's encouraging and motivating. A go-getter is a person who is determined to succeed and works really hard to achieve it. So basically, it's an achiever. In my case, I like chasing my dreams and setting objectives. One simple sentence, I'm not surprised Mia's founded a successful company. She's always been a go-getter. Number four, I've got one more noun, wishful thinking. I like this word a lot. And it means that you want something to be true, but unfortunately, it's unlikely to come true. Let's put it into a simple sentence. I think he's into me, but maybe they're just wishful thinking. And to help you remember wishful thinking, I've got one more song, also by Taylor Swift, and it's called Back to December. I like this song very much. And in this song, Taylor sings, maybe this is wishful thinking, probably mindless dreaming. But if you laughed again, I swear I love you right. And now let's move on to the word number five. It's an adjective, low-key. I like this word because I think it's funny. This adjective can be used in two different situations. The first one, we can use it to describe 
people who are relaxed, laid back and not intense. For example, he is a laid back, low key guy. And we can also use this adjective to describe something quiet, not noticeable and nothing fancy. For example, please don't throw a huge party. I want to keep it low key. And guys, before we continue and look at five more words that I really like, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel. And also, if you like this lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. Thank you. And now let's continue with our lesson. Number six, I've got a saying that I really like. Out of sight, out of mind. And we can use it in two different situations. The first one, if you don't see a problem, it doesn't worry you. You don't have to think about it. And it doesn't make you sad. For example, when we watch the news, we can see all the bad things happening around the world. And if you decide not to watch the news, you don't suffer. Out of sight, out of mind. And the second situation in which you can use this saying is when you don't see someone, it's easy to forget him or her. It works wonders for me. One simple sentence, I stopped following him on Instagram. Out of sight, out of mind. Number seven, I've got an idiom, blessing in disguise. I like it so much because of its powerful meaning. This idiom means that something seems bad or unlucky at first, but results in something good happening later. I've got a lesson on this idiom. You can click on the card right here and there is also a link down below. I shot this lesson when I was going through one of the hardest moments of my life two years ago. And it truly really helped me think that everything happens for a reason. And although nothing makes sense right now, it will in the end. One more song by James Arthur, Take It or Leave It. And in this song, he sings, and I hope it will all make sense in the end. So basically, I always try to find something positive in each situation, no matter how hard it is. And if you're going through a rough patch now, I really hope this idiom will give you some hope. Number eight, I've got one more idiom in line with the previous one. Every cloud has a silver lining. So it conveys a very similar idea. This idiom means that every sad or unpleasant situation has a positive side to it. We just need to look on the bright side. Two more to go, number nine, a very powerful phrase, blood, sweat and tears. Basically, it means that if you want to succeed, you need to work very hard. You have to make an effort. But as we know, the sweetest victory comes after the hardest battle. And last but not least, one of my favorite sayings, where there is a will, there is a way. It's my personal motto, together with impossible is nothing. I like to dream big and think that you can achieve anything if you put your mind to it. Let's learn a C1 idiom to put your mind to it. It means to put a lot of effort into doing something. For example, if you put your mind to it, anything is possible. So guys, that's it for today. Well done for making it to the end. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned some new words. And please tell me in the comments below what English word is your favorite. And of course, if you learned something new, please don't forget to like this lesson 
to subscribe to English Bits and catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day. Thank you for watching this lesson and see you next Sunday. Ciao for now!